Hi friends and happy Wednesday to you. So I'm doing a little bit of an impromptu. No, this isn't impromptu. This is all planned. <laughs> Actually, I knew what I wanted to talk about this week and this week's video and Wednesday videos on us for real are a little bit different. It's typically just going to be me. So I'm sorry if you prefer Adam. I'm now referring to Adam as the talent because let's face it, that's why people come to watch these vlogs. It's because of Adam. But we are fast approaching a season in life where I feel like I have to mentally prepare to take on. Um, and while I do enjoy it, I enjoy all the rip raw and the hoopla and the, the Mike Riley action. It's almost football season. Okay. talking to you today about some of my tips and ways that I enjoy football season because while I do enjoy football, don't get me wrong, um, I only enjoy it in small doses. As we kick off on Saturday, I need to be prepared for this. So here we go. Ooh, bear with me because I need to put my dinner in the oven. I definitely have you set up on a box that our new light kits came in and a Bottle of wine. So, yep, let's have some fun. Now, while I am a woman and my husband are a man, this can be for anybody. I mean, this is for anybody. Let's talk. There are ways that you can still look like you're enjoying yourself, even though you might not be fully enjoying yourself, but hopefully you can enjoy yourself. All right, tip number one get some garb try to try your very best to put your best foot forward and get in the spirit of things what i love about nebraska is you cannot go a block without finding some sort of husker hounds store somewhere where you can buy garb for the huskers if, if you can wear it they make it for the huskers they make slap bracelets get yourself a nice cardigan you know style up your husker accessories I look forward to every single year going out and buying a really cute shirt. Maybe it's a nice half zip or something. I have a preference of where I like to get my Husker stuff from. I will actually link it below. It's a gal called The Daily Tay. She is an old high school friend. Shout out to you, Taylor Wolf. Old friend of, not friend. Was she a friend? You knew her. Sure. Adam just came home. She makes these amazing shirts on Etsy and Every one of their mom tries to steal her designs, but she is the real the deal. The university, those guys are not nice. I have something else they say, but I won't because you're filming. Thank you. And she's great. She has such unique designs. One of her favorite shirts of mine is one that says, talk Herbie to me. <laughs> Which I always do. I'm a sucker for a good pun. But really, if you are really interested in like getting excited about a football game, go put on some team spirit. Go buy a jersey, go get a cute hat, do your thing, because even if you're not super jazzed to be there, you're still gonna look cute. All right, so tip number two, and I feel like I'm gonna have to let my hair down for this because it's getting hot in her. It's getting hot in this house. Plot out the entire season. Know which games you absolutely have to watch, which games you can get away from, and which games do not matter. You can probably find something else to do, whether it's going on a date with your significant other, Maybe you just happen to make. Maybe you just happen to make different plans. Um, it really kind of depends because sometimes I actually found last year that Adam ended up being like, well, "I don't want to watch this game," and I was like, "Cool," because I already have Plan B, and I have this whole thing set up, and we've got a whole day plan, and we're doing a parade. So that never really happened, but it'd be cool if it did. Obviously, I can't get away from the Madison, Wisconsin game because it's Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Uh, who else do we play? Oregon, we play some good ones. I clearly need to get on the schedule and plot the schedule out. You can never miss the first game no matter who we play, so just plan on being a part of it. Just plan on it. All right, number three, make some bomb food. Food is, while it shouldn't be the centerpiece of things, and because we live in America where I feel like stuff just revolves around food, don't feel like it has to, but 
look forward to the snacks that you make during game time. Having some good food set out can make or break your ball game. So don't just play it like SNL and get the Totina's pizza rolls because that's not gonna do. Something Adam and I have done and actually like a legit tradition we've created is soups on game day. We get to break out our three piece crock pot set from his grandma, thanks Noni. And uh, we're gonna do some soups this season. Some of our favorite soups are a jalapeno chicken soup, yum. Adam does a really good tortilla chicken soup, also yum, much healthier compared to the jalapeno chicken. He does some other ones too. Anyway, they're delightful. Oh, Adam figured out how to do the, has anyone ever been to, if you're in the Omaha area, Mantra or the restaurant Taxis, owned by the same person. They have this bomb blue cheese, what is it? Oh, it's blue cheese and cabbage soup. It'll change your life. If, if I can get him to give me the recipe, I will link it in this blog for you because it is so good. Uh, other things I look forward to are making sure that you have like really good appetizers, maybe a nice dessert. Um, I know in the past I've made an eggless cookie dough dip. It goes over famously if you are, goes over famously if you've got a ton of people, you know, folks with sweet tooths. Um, there's tons of different appetizers and things. I will link a few in this blog for you to check out. Pinterest approved. I feel like there's so many tips to make it through football season. Um, but if you're into this sort of thing, alcohol, but don't go chasing waterfalls, all right? Don't go getting sloshed in the first quarter. Nobody likes a sloppy Sally, okay? Especially if you're going over to somebody's house that you don't know. B number one, if you're going over to someone's house that you don't know and you're watching a game that you're not super excited about, just play it classy, all right? Bring something that you enjoy, but that you're not gonna get super out of control with. You can, you can get out of control and put on your sweatpants when you're at home, girl. Don't do it at the game. Don't do it at the tailgate because you're just going to want to take a nap later. We'll get to that in just a second. But essentially, you're really just going to want to enjoy yourself and keep a nice, even buzz throughout the entire game. Obviously, if you don't drink alcohol and you can make it through a game, high five to you. Like, you need to teach me your secrets because I don't know how you do it. It's Monday and I'm drinking a glass of wine. Typically, it's like a Tito's vodka and tonic. Maybe it's a glass of wine. What else have I had for game day? Never shots. Don't ever do it. It's just a horrible idea. If anybody ever tries to bring you a shot, Husker game day shots, Vegas bombs, whatever it is, if it has the word bomb at the end of it, just, just run, just run away. Go hide in the bathroom because you don't need that in your life. No one needs it. We're not, you know, we're not the Huskers of 94, 95. Now, if we were, then I'd say, hey, to each their own, do your thing, girlfriend, but not this year. Not this year. All right, next tip. Very important, very important, very important, very important. You have to actually know a couple of key players for the year, right? So every year I, it kind of starts off, I will typically troll Facebook or ask my husband who he feels like the key players are gonna be. I learn who those players are. It might be two or three people, and those are who I focus on for the year. If I get caught up in a football conversation, I can have a couple of minutes of small talk and relate to these people so that they feel like I know what I'm talking about, even if I don't. But I know a few of the key players and I can say, oh yeah, Rodriguez, did you see his pass on the, whatever? That interception by Fleming was amazing last Saturday. Did you see that? I can't believe he blocked Sue. You're gonna sound like a genius and people will respect you for it. So pick your two to three players, Figure them out beforehand. Maybe take the first two games while you're hanging out at home. Get them locked down. Know who they are and stick to them for the rest of the season. I promise you'll be happy that you did. Everyone that knows me now is going to quiz me on other players. I'm going to have to learn the entire team, aren't I? <sighs> All right, funny satire. So when you're having troubles throughout the season, uh, one site I've been enjoying, and I don't know if he's gonna do it again this year, is Tunnel Walk of Shame, and it's at tunnelwalkofshame.com. <clears throat> and every week, <clears throat> typically, most weeks, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting all beclimped. I'm getting all beclimped just thinking about football season. My hair looks like a hot mess. 
I have eight minutes left. All right, sorry, I got a thing in the oven, we're doing a thing. Every year before football season, I get super excited because of Tunnel Walk of Shame. And back when Bo Pelini was the head coach of the Huskers, Tunnel Walk of Shame was in its prime. I mean, in its prime. This is when fake Bo Pelini was out on Twitter. It was a great year for me. I barely watched half of the games, but I felt like I knew what I was talking about. I related to people, kept them laughing. Tunnel Walk of Shame made my life. The only reason I looked forward to watching the games on the weekend was because Tunnel Walk of Shame came out the night before, if not the morning of the games. And you could literally flip through still images. It was like meme city for any of these football games. You could, it told a beautiful story and it was usually fictitious. It was mostly fictitious. It was very funny though. And I feel like my husband and I bonded over Tunnel Walk of Shame because we would get cozy in our little cozy, you know, sweatpants or whatever, and maybe grab a glass of wine and we would read Tunnel Walk of Shame together. It was a moment that we had with one another. It was very sweet. And so I hope Tunnel Walk of Shame comes back because it's really good for my marriage. Next tip for surviving football season. Don't just go to a game because you can get cheap tickets. It's like, it's like picking your husband. It's like picking your spouse. You're not just gonna pick somebody because they're there, right? You're gonna wanna really know, can I spend time with this person? And so you need to ask yourself before you go to this football game, number one, where are the seats at? Because I gotta know that it's gonna be you know, a good place to sit. There's quick access to the bathroom, the hot dog stand. Can I get a, you know, can I get a coffee real quick? And number two, what's the climate gonna be like? I made the mistake one year of going to the Nebraska-Iowa game the day after Thanksgiving. It was literally below zero. Uh, we get up to the 600s all the way up in the nosebleeds at Memorial Stadium and the entire the entire the entire bench span of benches was frozen. It was like it was the movie Frozen. It was like Elsa came and did her thing and she was like, "F all of you, you're not going to enjoy this game." We spent the majority of the game sitting on pizza boxes and I spent the majority of the game in the stairwell drinking coffee on Instagram. So I, I'm the type of person I would much rather just enjoy the game from the comforts of my home. I have a beautiful couch. I can lay on it. I can go lay in my own bed if I want to. It's great. I got, I got nothing to complain about. All right, final tip for making it through football season. And this sun is about to get intense, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up here for you, hopefully. Final tip for surviving football season. This is really important. Guys and gals, you are seriously gonna wanna listen in and I'm gonna get really close to the camera so that you can read the words that are coming out of my mouth. Here's why it's important. Here's what, here's what it is first. Listen to me closely. Third quarter naps. Third quarter naps. Here's what happens. You get into first quarter, you're super excited. Maybe you are hosting and you're getting all the appetizers laid out. You're making sure Uncle Bob has his beer. You know, you're making sure that your hubby has what he needs. You're getting everyone pretty situated. You know, maybe there's a good kickoff goes well. Everyone's excited and cheering. Woo! Yeah! Go Huskers! Then, what happens next? Quarter two. Things are getting kind of intense. This is when you can start to bring out your, you know, talking about your two to three players that you typically know for the year. You can really start relating to people. Maybe you take a quick bathroom break. You might step outside for a hot minute, but you're making sure that things are pre-prepped and ready to go for halftime. Because halftime is when it happens. So you hit halftime, what happens? Everyone goes to the kitchen. Everyone's hungry. They need to actually eat. This is your time to shine if you're hosting, all right? Now, if you're not hosting, this is your time to eat. You enjoy yourself. You take a minute, you go get yourself, you know, whatever's put out, whether it's the cookie dough bites, maybe you're gonna get yourself some pizza, maybe you got a little wing action, maybe you're gonna eat some soup. In my case, I eat soup. I like to get some smaller bowls, try a few of each, a little sampler, a little sampler platter. It's like going to Panera and ordering a, you know, you pick two, because I'm not paying for it. All right, next, here's what happens. By this time, people are starting to get tired, right? Uncle Bob might be getting a little tipsy. Just kind of depends. It's your time to shine. It's the third quarter. You know what time that is? Time for you to take a nap. So before everybody else gets back to the couch, you're gonna go claim your spot on that couch, wherever it's at. Sometimes you gotta pick the floor. If you do that, make sure you grab yourself a nice throw pillow. I would make sure to figure out what throw pillow you wanna grab in quarter one. Get a nice blanket, put yourself on the floor, 
before third quarter gets started, before kickoff even, if you're sleeping, good for you. You get yourself in a good 20 minute power nap because typically by the time you wake up, somebody's screaming about something because Lawrence Phillips, Philip Rodriguez, Jeremiah Jackson, whatever his name is, is usually running for a touchdown. And that's the point that you can get up, get excited for the Huskers and be awake, fully, re fully refreshed, fully restored, and you don't even have to watch all four quarters, but you can get into the fourth quarter. And when things get done, you give everyone a high five, you send everyone on their way. Maybe you go home to your own house and you enjoy the game. It's great. Third quarter naps are my arsenal. They are my secret weapon for every game. My entire family knows that I take a third quarter nap. So when third quarter rolls around, I've already, I've already laid out the boundaries. I've already set the precedent. Everybody knows that they need to just leave me alone. So that's great. So this wine bottle's reflecting off of my face. It's beautiful. That is the Us For Real Tips to Surviving Football Season. See you on Sunday. Are you listening? Damn. I have lettuce in my teeth, don't I? Always. Every time I eat yeah. spinach, without a doubt, it happens. Uh.